Hey guys, this will be a quick one. Fake news CNN is in crisis mode and the ratings disaster post the election has executives scrambling. What's going on behind the scenes at CNN? Well, spoiler, there's a looming layoff storm that could hit their top talent hard. Today, we're pulling back the curtain on CNN's big money mess. Who's on the chopping block and why their top talent might not be safe. Let's get into it. All right, welcome back to the channel. So CNN is officially in panic mode. I know, it's probably not a shocker to a lot of us, right? But let's get real. CNN's post-election ratings disaster has left them with no choice but to take drastic measures. And that means layoff city. Now, let's talk about who might be on the chopping block. And trust me, it's not just the interns. According to Puck's latest report, CNN executives are prepping to slice off some of their highest paid stars. Chris Wallace, he's already out saying that he's excited and liberated about moving on. Yeah, it sounds like a guy who didn't know that he was the problem. <laughs> and now there's speculation around some big names. Think Anderson Cooper with his 20 million salary. Aaron Burnett, 6 million. And then there's Caitlin Collins, who I can't stand, pulling in 3 million. Do you think CNN's top talent will really survive this cut? Then there's Wolf Blitzer and Jake Tapper. Two household names. Word on the street, they're on thin ice too. Imagine being passed over for a raise while the network's looking to restore its reputation. Fancy speak for stop the bleeding or kill the hemorrhaging. Just wait. It only gets a little more dramatic. Puck's Dylan Byers adds fuel to the fire saying that Within months, CNN will hit the brakes on a massive part of their staff, hundreds across production teams. So those reporters, yeah, they might be asked to pull double duty without a dime extra. And if you think that's where the cuts end, you'd be wrong. Mark Thompson, the new CEO, is now at the wheel after Chris Lick's short-lived run. Under his lead, ratings have dropped by more than 20%. Talk about coming in to save the day and accidentally hitting reverse. Yeah, he's not giving up just yet, though, apparently. He's cooking up a new digital first version of CNN. Will it work? Well, only time will tell. They tried this digital thing before, and it collapsed in under a month. Oh, and for those of you wondering about CNN's past glory days, let's rewind to 2016, shall we? Jeff Sucker, remember that jackass? He was pulling in a massive 13.3 million primetime viewers. Now, fast forward to today, they're barely breaking 800,000. Damn, that's got to hurt. And the rating humiliation doesn't end there. On election night, MSNBC scored 6 million viewers, and Fox crushed it with 10.3. Meanwhile, CNN was left trailing, barely hanging on. It's a shift in the cable news world, and it's not in CNN's favor. Legacy news is pretty much going to be dead over the next four years. You watch. Adding a bit more drama, Chris Wallace with his $8.5 million contract has decided not to renew. He's considering podcasting instead. His quote, this is the first time in 55 years I've been between jobs. I'm actually excited and liberated by that. I guess he's making lemonade out of those CNN lemons, right? But here's where it gets pretty interesting. Despite the layoffs, CNN is also looking to bring in new positions. Yeah, they're cutting, but they're also hiring. Now, why? Well, it's all part of Thompson's big digital vision. But judging by the reported stress and high anxiety at their HQ, it doesn't sound like anyone's holding their breath for a miracle. So where does this leave us? Well, CNN's ship is sinking, and the top brass are bailing water like there's no tomorrow. Will Anderson, Aaron, Jake, and Wolf be the ones that CNN decides they can live without? Or are they going down with the ship? Stick around to find out because there's more to this story. It's far from over. All right, let's face some facts. These people who are on the chopping block, don't forget that they did it to themselves. Their TDS went to such levels that they did anti-Trump 24-7, 365. The people who were journalists in the past at that network, they gave it all up and became activists for the progressive left. They hated Trump so much that now they may be out of a job. Now, who knows? Maybe they'll wind up at News Nation if they cozy up the Fredo for a bit. They had high ratings during the first Trump administration because they were competing with the lunatics over at MSNBC to see who could do the craziest broadcast between the two fake news outlets. 
This is what happens when you call yourself a news network and you give up on journalism. So they only have themselves to blame. All right. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell. If you want to be kept up to date with all things news and politics, I'll see you in the next one. Spread the word. Your mama forgot I know it hurts